I shouldn't be having this camera in my hand while I'm driving. I want y'all to see this. See this new thing. Close up on it. Check it out. We're out here testing it now. That bad boy looks nice. Check it out. What is up, fam? host message finds you all well in great spirits. We are here in Georgia, that's right. But my inbox on Instagram, Stang Mode Official, is blowing up because if you guys do not do or don't know, I have an order in for GT500, but a lot of my GT500 friends who put in allocations and deposits are hitting me up that they're gonna pull them for the new Corvette C8. Now, we gotta talk about this because this C8 Corvette is granted automotive history. It is amazing. And the latest render, and I mean, not even render, but the video of them out in the real world. I thought it was strong, but no, it's so strong. It's so I have to be 100% honest, I am completely head over heels for the Corvette C8. I can't deny it even more. I'm profess professing it right here, right now, that I do like that car a lot. Does that mean I'm a Chevy guy or what? No, 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 that just means that I really love what they did with the Corvette C8. I, this, the fact that makes it so crazy is the fact that it is just a entry level model they've shown us. This is a 495 base model horsepower car. Uh, and it's it's breaking necks. I can't, you can't go anywhere if you're an automotive uh, enthusiast or you're anywhere on YouTube. It's, it's just everywhere. And for good reason. Um, it's groundbreaking, it's automotive history. We had to talk about it in comparison to the Shelby GT500 and what that means. Uh, I am still getting a GT500. I am not wavering. I am still getting a GT500. I have, I'm gonna have Epic kind of GT500. But what does that mean for the people who are pulling their orders for the G, of the GT500 for the C8? There's a few simple reasons. And the simple reason is this. It comes down to price, its look, its performance. You know, just as much as the Hellcat dropped the bomb with 707 horsepower, uh, Corvette has done that with the under zero to 60, under three seconds, and the fact that it starts under 60,000. Uh, the GT500, the reason why a lot of us Mustang people are so, uh, you know, scrambling is because we waited for that product for so long, right? And for lack of a better term, in January, when I was there at the, at the in Detroit at the reveal, it was very underwhelming because of the fact that the GT500 had to be to really, and I'm talking, us Mustang guys are gonna love GT500 regardless, but to do what the C8 did in the car community and what the Hellcat did in the car community, you have to really push the envelope. The GT500 is gonna be an epic car. I'm still gonna get it, we're still gonna test it, we're still gonna have fun with it. But it's about separating yourself from the pack, making it unique, and a rear wheel drive supercharged Mustang isn't as groundbreaking as a mid-engine Corvette. The C8 starts at under 60, the GT500 starts in the mid 70s at 74. Now, you're thinking it's a $15,000 difference. The GT500 is not that far off in price because it is a supercharged car that has 760 horsepower but the problem with it is what really hurts the GT500 is the markups, right? It's the ADMs. The ADMs are really causing an issue for a lot of people who were gladly putting $20,000 down, uh, not down before markup, and that's not a problem. Whereas you have the CA coming out under 60,000. I know there are some dealers are gonna mark it up, but a majority of the dealers aren't gonna mark it up because of the volume. The C8 is going to be made in such volume that it's going to be very accessible for people. So that 
recipe of accessibility, uniqueness. It's good looking. It's a good looking car. I, you gotta admit, it's a good looking car. Performance. This has really, it's a really, it's a home run. It is a home run, and we haven't even driven the car yet. I mean, just on the specs alone. Is it a paper tiger? Maybe. I don't think it's a paper tiger. I think that they're gonna really knock our socks off in regard to the upcoming models. Because like I said in prior videos, they are putting all their eggs in, this, in the Corvette basket. They're moving away from Camaro. They're putting all the eggs in the, in the Corvette basket. So the question is, what is Ford gonna do? What is Mustang gonna do, right? Uh, Ford still has a hybrid Mustang coming. They still have things that I'm hearing about in regard to uh, the S650. I don't know if they're gonna go mid-engine. I doubt that they're gonna do that radical of a transformation because they have the Ford GT supercar. And the the problem is this. Everyone's comparing the GT500 to the C8. And the reality is people saying, well, the C8 is actually more geared toward the Ford GT. It comes down to price again. The price of the Ford GT is half a million dollars very unaccessible the Corvette is accessible so that's why people are comparing it people always compare things when they're in the same price range because that's where your money goes are you gonna get a C8 or a, a GT500 now this is the real question forget about getting the track pack GT500 if you get the base GT500 and a base C8 let me know comment below would you rather have a base C8 or a base GT500 the base C8 is going to be, I would say, more a little above the 60s when you do destination and delivery and other taxes and all that. So I'm going to say 64, 65,000 for a base and then 74K for the, the base GT500. So there's a $10,000 difference. So I'm asking you, what are your thoughts? Is it better to get a base GT500 or a base C8? And from just the the kind of lukewarm pull I'm taking. Everyone's jumping to see it. It could be just it's just it's the new hot girl in school, you know. Everyone's jumping, but uh, I don't think this is stopping anytime soon. I at uh, have never experienced hype like this before for a car. I didn't know. I mean, we knew the C8 was coming, but I didn't know it was going to be like this. And I honestly, I still gonna get the GT500, but I'm gonna really start to rearrange a lot more things and see. If you're pulling your GT500 order to get a C8, that's your, I, I understand because it is a more expensive car with dealer markups. But if you're able to find the car without dealer markup, I think you should keep your allocation because we still, we still have to, uh, it remains to be seen what that car can do and all its abilities. Uh, and those kind of things. But you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I think, oh, I, talking to my, most of my Chevy friends, the car should be starting to hit around early, early, early is December, but normally around late January, February, we'll see them. So I'll still have my GT500 beforehand, uh, before we can start really comparing, comparing the two. But you know, at the end of the day, it is a mid-engine car, so you're, I don't know why people are comparing it, but I, I'm doing it. GT500 versus C8 is like the hottest comparison. People are talking about the Supra versus the C8, and the C Supra is a joke now, apparently, because of the C8. So, I don't know. I literally, the car wheel is on his head right now. I have no idea what to say. I, I don't know anymore. I mean, it was, the lines were fine. You know, everything's changed. Incredibly beautiful. And at the end of the day, when you step back and look at it, it has to say Corvette. It's part art, so hand sculpting clay, and part digital math-based design. I think a lot of the leadership thought we want to go to mid-engine because it's cool, you know, because most exotic sports cars in the world were mid-engine, but actually we were doing it because we felt like we were reaching the limit of our performance capability and the architectures that we had. And so we had to do something to move that forward. When I first heard that they were gonna make the new Corvette mid-engine, really it was a, a game changer. We're bordering on 70 years of this vehicle. So you have this lineage to it that you have to maintain, but you also have to be willing to grow and take it further. With the mid-engine attributes, you'd have the, the rear weight bias from the engine for better acceleration, performance, and track times, as well as the low forward cowl for excellent visibility and the lighter front, which really makes the car fun to drive. 
Corvette is an emotional driving experience. No matter who you are in life, when you get into a Corvette, you're a superhero. We needed a bespoke transmission, custom designed for this car, because we have engines that produce massive amounts of torque, so the DCTs that are on the shelf wouldn't stand the Corvette duty cycle. Is you've got a shaft that has your even forward gears, two, four, six, eight, and your odd gears, one, three, five, seven, and you can simultaneously be disengaging one shaft while you're engaging the other one. So it's quicker than a human being could shift a manual transmission. This way you get the lightning fast, less than 100 milliseconds shift when you need it. What if we could do a new definition of a mid-engine sports car, not just for high-performance driving, but to go on trips, adventures, just make the driving to work an experience. Utility of the car has been something we focused on true, ensuring that we've got a space for people to store luggage or groceries or what have you. So we have a front storage section that's very deep. We've got a trunk in the rear that not only accommodates two bags of golf clubs, but uh, also stows the removable roof panel. Driver mode, which is what most people are used to as tour, sport, track, and weather. Um, my mode and Z mode are actually just two additional modes. Tour, we look at it as a balanced mode that's good at everything. Sport is a little bit more catered toward the spirited driving. Track is all about the response and how the vehicle handles around maximum cornering, maximum acceleration, and maximum driver feel of the road. What my mode and Z mode will allow you to do is for the driver to configure it themselves. The design intent of Z mode is for a single use case. You could set up Z mode for that curvy road that you go on every day on the way to work. Click on Z mode, do your curvy road, and then go back to my mode, and that's your day. What we wanted to do was kind of go to a three-seat strategy. With the GT1 seat, that gives you your perfect everyday kind of driving seating position, comfortable bolsters. The new entry that we have for this one is the GT2. The GT2 seat is really, really an exciting seat. It's a Napa leather. It has the most color blocking opportunities. It's a really beautiful form seat. The other side effect of that is it allowed us to really dial up the competition seat. So we brought in a new material. It does a couple of things. One, it holds you in, and then the other side of it is it eliminates a little bit more leather because every ounce counts on this vehicle, especially when you're tracking it. When we started designing the interior, we wanted to make sure that it felt uniquely Corvette, but it feels like no Corvette you've ever been in before. We're going from 10 colors to 12 colors. This will be the most we've ever offered. What we're finding is that our consumers want to bring a little bit of their own identity in the car and really want to exemplify who they are and bring their own emotion out. And then the other main point that we did on the interior was the stitching and seatbelts. And this is really giving you a step above black when you go down that path. Drivers can now raise the front of their Corvette almost two inches in less than three seconds with the available front lift. While it can be manually activated, it can also be programmed to remember the GPS locations of up to a thousand obstacles throughout your commute so that you don't, for example, have to remember to activate it every time you arrive home. We here, 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 we